Michael Nagy here with Jiggy Jag TV and DiscoveringBands.com. And for everyone watching, I'm sure this video on my channel and help support the awesome bands I feature. And today I'm here with the Foreign Resort. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. Doing. It's a uh, it's a Monday here in Copenhagen, so uh, <laughs> nothing much to 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 talk about except the up upcoming tour, of course, uh, of uh, North America. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to having you come to the U.S. Uh, in a couple weeks. When's the last yeah. time you've been to the U.S.? Uh, 2019 was the last time, and then we had a, a scheduled tour for uh, March 2020, and we all know how that went. <laughs> and how hard is it to get the uh, visas and everything to play the U.S. nowadays? Uh, well, it was actually easier this time than it was back in uh, in, in 2020. So, because we actually didn't have visas back then, <laughs> um, it's. Yeah, it's just a lot of questions, and you have to prove a lot of things. You have to prove that you're an internationally acclaimed artist and, and stuff like that, which is kind of ridiculous because I think we will actually end up leaving more money in the United States than actually making on, on a tour like this. So it, it's good for the the American economy, you could say. <laughs> but still, it's like it's very time consuming. It's very annoying, and it's very expensive too. Like at this point, I'd say. We we spend about five thousand dollars on on visa alone. Wow, yeah, that's super expensive. Yeah, that's yeah, it is. <laughs> but it's like, do you want to tour or do you not want to tour? So it's like, okay, we got to do it. Awesome. And now you make amazing post punk dark wave music, and I was wondering what some of your influences were. Oh. The, everyone goes back to like original influences back in the day. I always like to 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 bring more contemporary smaller artists. Like uh, I'd say a, a band I'm really I really like that I'm influenced by is uh, New Canyons out of Chicago. We're, we're playing with them at the um, Cold Waves Festival, but we also toured with them in the states like back like uh, that's that's a while ago now. But uh, really cool guys, and they make really good music. It's a uh, it's a duo. So like shoegaze, uh, new wave duo. Uh, there's also a place to bury strangers. I like them for their noisy guitars. We're not as noisy at all, but but it's I really like it. So we're, we're trying to bring some of that too. Um, yeah, but of course I did listen to a lot of The Cure when I was younger. <laughs> so so it's there. It's definitely present. Uh, That's what I was going to ask next: is what got you into this style of music? Well. It's, See, the funny thing is, actually, we, we set out back back when we started out, we set out to play shoegaze. And uh, we realized playing in Germany that our fans, they were like wearing all wearing black and they were you know black nail polish, black eyeliner. And we were like, what is that? That's not shoegaze. And turned out we were actually not playing shoegaze at all. We were playing like new wave, post punky stuff. So we figured like, OK, that's. It actually that seemed more natural to us, so we we kind of put ourselves more in that direction. But you could say kind of we were just there without really thinking that we were there. <laughs> so yeah, I don't I don't know what to say. <laughs> it just started like that. <laughs> now, what are you currently working on? Some new music because uh, I saw the last album was like a remix album. Yep, yeah, the last real album was actually April twenty nineteen. So it's. More than three years ago, um, so we we went through it's like, well, let me just say that the whole COVID lockdown and and that whole period was not easy for, well, it's not easy for anyone. But you know, a lot of people spend it creatively and they they wrote new music and recorded new music. I I was just working. I I was working and working and working. You know, day job. I I I don't make my living as a musician. I I, I teach Danish to foreigners, so that's that's my day job. And I was just teaching like crazy and making making money like that. So we, I made very little music, which means the, that once the the pandemic was over, which we hope it is, <laughs> um, I could kind of resume focusing on on writing music. Of course, I, I produced a few demos here and there. So right now we have a new drummer and we have like a new recording constellation. Our live guitarist who's been playing live with us for i don't know 10 years or so he he's he's recording with us now too so um that's the three of us uh, recording music now and that's we, we've been 
working on new songs over the past like six months or so uh, with with the demo. So there's there's actually a new single coming at the end of this month in connection with the tour kickoff. So there's a new song on the way. Awesome. Can you tell us the name of that song to look out for? It's called Overturn. <laughs> I hope that's a correct thing to say in English. I actually asked the, the video director. He's from L.A. So so I asked him, like, can you say that? Overturn. And like, yeah, that's good. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, that's a pretty pretty gloomy piece. Like we we were thinking, like, oh well, should we try and make it easy for the listeners? Now we haven't released uh, uh, you know something in, in 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 a long time. But the you know the two the, our new drummer he comes from the punk environment and, and the really like really noisy dark environment musically. So he was like, let's pick that one among the demos, and that's so it it it, it it's a pretty gloomy piece and not a not not really hit potential but you know for for people into that genre they're hopefully they're going to dig it so i was going to ask uh, what kind of direction or style are you leaning towards the new music compared to your previous releases well it's i'd say the same style but with a new drummer he has he has a different style so we came from a lot of you know four to the floor like a uh, 16th notes and uh, on the hi hat, and now we're going more eighth notes, more like a punkish style. Uh, he, he, our drummer just has a different style, so it kind of um, is reflected in, in in the way the music is. Uh, well, it just sounds. So it, it might be me still writing mostly what 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 we what we do, but the expression is different. I would say it's more like you know he's. <laughs> it's funny. I said punk, but our, our drummer, he's very much into uh, Dave Grohl's drumming. So you have like open hi-hats, you have cymbal hits, like, you know, just a lot of banging on the drums. <laughs> so that's that's very different from um, from what we had earlier. It's it's a little more, um, I'd say it's probably a little more out of control, which is cool, which I like. Awesome. Now, yeah. if uh, people want to find you online, get your music on social media, how do they do that? Uh, Theforumresort.com. That's the website. That's the main website. And then, of course, Facebook, the Foreign Resort. Uh, on Twitter, Instagram, it's just Foreign Resort, no the. And yeah, YouTube, we're there as well. And of course, like all the streaming, all the streaming services, Spotify, Deezer, uh, whatever, you can find us there. It's all over the place. Awesome. I, I want to ask how did the name the Foreign Resort come to be? I, that's, that's a long time time ago <laughs> but i i'd say like, like right now what the foreign resort means to to me personally is kind of like this uh, this longing to to go out and get out there you know it's always like this constant move from one place to another that you kind of you could you kind of say touring is my, my thing and that's kind of what is reflected in uh, in the band name it, it to begin with the the name actually was kind of like the grass is always greener on the other side kind of you you'd come to this foreign resort and it would be raining and you'd be like oh man i wish i was back home anyway now it's sunshine there <laughs> so that was that was kind of the, the 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 initial idea for for that yeah and i see online you're constantly touring and i was wondering uh, what are some places you haven't played yet that you still want to play ah uh, well in europe I would love to go to Spain. We haven't been there yet. Portugal. And we're trying to expand a little out east. You know, we played Poland for the first time last year, which was really nice. We played Budapest in, in Hungary, which was really nice too. So we're kind of like, I don't know, I, I tr try to go east, you know, even though east is it's kind of like, a, it's not the best place to, to, you can't go too east in Europe right now. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that, that would be countries also like uh, Central America. We have a lot of friends that played like Mexico, even South America. They play Chile, Argentina or, or, or Brazil. I'd love to go there too, but it's that's very far away from Denmark. Like so. <laughs> but they're they're on the list. You know, if we get the opportunity, uh, we will definitely go. So basically the goal is to just keep touring the world, right? Yeah, but also. So within reason, you know, we're, we're trying to make money <laughs> right now. It, it's very convenient for us to tour uh, Germany, for example, or even France, because we could actually drive there. You know, it's, you know, from here to Hamburg, it's, what is it? It's like six hours from here to Berlin. It's about eight hours, nine hours. We could drive to Paris in 12 hours. 
So, so we can kind of get places in a car, which makes it cheaper uh, to, to go and you don't have to rent equipment. We can actually stuff everything inside our, our station wagon. Yeah, I, I didn't say minivan. I didn't say van. I said station wagon. Like it's a, a mini soccer mom car that will fit everything. We downsized li like crazy just to, you know, to enable us to do that. Uh, looking forward to you coming to the U.S. in a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah, it'll be good. More room, more equipment. <laughs> yeah, awesome. but also longer drives, longer massive drives. But we we've done it before, so we're we're used to it. I'm I'm excited to see how our drummer handles it. But you know, he was that was actually one of the questions we asked him when he when we talked about him joining the band. We we're like, how do you feel about you know just sitting there for hours and just shutting up? You know, we actually said shut the boot up, right? And he was like. I can do that. I'm like, that's it. You're in. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's wow. just a lot of that. You know, you just sit there and listen to music and then someone says something stupid after an hour and then you kind of laugh and then no one says anything for another hour and you just listen to music and do your thing, sleep or something and then take it easy. That's, I think it's very important to be able to take it easy when, when you're on the road. Otherwise, you just burn out too easy. Yeah, yeah. Well, what tips would you give uh, fellow musicians for uh, touring and on the road? Well, that relax. <laughs> I, I actually, I, I read a book by um, what's his name, Atkins. He's from uh, he's from Chicago. Now I forgot his first name. That's really embarrassing. But he wrote a book. It's called Tour Smart and Break the Band. And he had like you know, the for example, a chapter that said the positive sides of alcohol. And then the next chapter was the negative sides of alcohol. So you you know you have some some different things. I think any anything in moderate doses, you know, don't 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 drink too much because you burn out. But drink enough to uh, so you have a little fun. But or if you don't like alcohol, don't drink any. You know, drink Red Bull or yeah, and be nice to people. That's also very important. That's always what I say because there you always hear some people that that weren't nice and they kind of rumor spreads and and you know once they start you know you play i don't know seattle and then you're you're, you're an asshole in seattle and then next thing you come to uh, you come to philadelphia and they're like no we're not having you we heard from this guy and this band that you guys weren't behaving you you're actually not being nice so you're not getting it so that's there's kind of that thing you know be nice because it flips back at you it's karma out there yeah, and the fans definitely appreciate it too. When you're, you know, willing to, you know, meet them, uh, hang out, show support, and it mm -hmm. makes a big difference. Oh yes, it, we're we're never backstage really. Well, I, I go backstage to get another beer, but uh, but that's that's it. Um, you know, it's sitting backstage is like well, we sat all day in the car with these people. And then we you come to come to the venue, and you don't want to just sit with the same people again. You want to go out there and meet someone. I I kind of see meeting the fans or just meeting people in general. You know, fans or not, as as like the 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 I don't know the second biggest or maybe even the biggest benefit of touring because it's feels nice. It kind of like it's it gives you a a lot of energy, like a, a lot of positive energy that feels good. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to what you have coming up next, and it was great having you and talk with you and everybody. Look them up. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs>